So I'm the host of Paul Chen. Uh, I'm from, uh, of course, which is a, a art, art tech center uh, in Shanghai. We, we provide education to like young kids to learn design and the technology. We also have, we also do a lot of like art and the music exhibition uh, in like a Shanghai uh, Opera Center or like a different uh, like a uh, uh, commercial space. So that's my background. And uh, today we are definitely want to talk about like uh, uh, technology and the music. You know, in the, past, in the last decade, technology has played a huge role in our mu musical experience. And many companies are trying to enrich our musical uh, experience in many innovative and uh, creative ways. We know that SXSW is a well-known cross-border event for music and technology in the United States. Berkeley uh, is all about form. There, there are many innovative in institutions in the music industry. Whether it's, a, it's SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple Music, Facebook, and many music legends. New music waves, music copyright licensing, music data analyzed in the age of streaming media, AI engines, ETC. They are all become the focus on the discussing in the industry. We also hope that we all have the opportunity to create China's music technology event. And we wish that in this international independent music festival is a good start for the future explore, uh, explorations. So today we get you all from all over the world coming to this meeting. Let me introduce you guys. The first is uh, Chazi Jackie from Chat Music, uh, Chat Magic. Who, <laughs> can you raise your hand? Maybe just uh, say hi, hi to guys. everyone. <laughs> hi. Second, Hello. I want to introduce is uh, Jialing Pan from Food Dimensions. Hello, everyone. I want to introduce Hazo, uh, Hazo Savage from Museo. I want to introduce Chantel Ipe from Clean, uh, Click and Clear. Hey, yeah. Uh. Hi, guys. So uh, today, I, actually, I want to like, uh, uh, you know, both of you from this like uh, art and uh, music and the technology industry. I think you have a lot of like uh, experience or like uh, uh, has been working in this industry for years. So I want to you guys introduce yourself first to tell our audience what you have been, uh, what you have done, and what your company about. So who wants to, to be the first? Shall I share my screen to run a quick presentation? Sure. It's called Companies Gather about when, when they sell music. What we're more interested in is um, the listeners rather than the number of listens. We're interested in how consumers engage with music how they discover music, how they share music between themselves. And we're interested in the overall individual artist. And market data, you know, is not unfamiliar to the music industry. It's things like the charts and it's general knowledge about music, which, you know, in the past we've always had, but we've always had very limited amounts of that sort of data in the past. Charts and knowledge of what was played on the radio or knowledge of what was who because in the past, not much market data was created. Um, to put it into perspective, um, if you wind back 20 or 30 years, the average music consumer created two data points per year. In other words, you know, they bought two CDs or they bought a CD and a concert ticket. That was the limit on the amount of data which was actually created about the marketplace per person per year in the past whereas today the average music consumer is creating almost 10, 20 000 data points per year that can be a stream of a piece of music on a spotify or another music service or it can be watching a video on youtube or liking a post on a social network and to make matters more interesting data's got richer these days as well as just measuring positive engagement positive sentiment we can also measure negative sentiment when people don't like something. So for instance, if somebody unlikes a post 
or unfollows an artist. We can measure that sort of data. So, so much, there's so much more data these days. And, and to make matters more complicated, it's all global. In the past, you know, what happened in the music industry tended to happen in just one country. Very, very few artists were, in a sense, international artists. Whereas today, kids who make music in their bedroom can release it globally and have it available on every digital music service around the world within 24 hours. So suddenly this market has become incredibly globalized. And so to give you an example, so at Chartmetric, we pull in this market data from multiple different sources, digital services, social networks, um, web analytics, and increasingly traditional forms of media as well. For instance, radio, which still has influence. And we then use a lot of machine learning to join this data together to help our users understand how what happens on a social network in Indonesia can influence what is happening on a streaming service in Europe, can influence what is happening on YouTube in the USA, because today everything is integrated. Um, how do people use Chartmetric? Well, 365 marketing, you know, audience development around artists. You know, again, in the past, the average artist was marketed by their record company for two weeks per year, or one week if the ship figures were bad. Um, today, artists have to retain the engagement of their audience all the time, 365 days per year, and constantly acquire and retain audiences to grow progressively over time. And on chart metric, we help people uncover the metrics which are useful for identifying how they're doing that. Um, second key main use is playlists. You know, it's, we always take it for granted these days that people don't really consume albums anymore. It's not that there isn't a marketplace for albums and people don't buy albums, but people listen to music predominantly on playlists. So we're helping our users discover which playlists are most valuable, which are most relevant, which are the largest, but also which are the small, most influential tastemaker lists. Third key main use, which I've already discussed, is global promotion. There's no borders today. And so we present data in a way where you can look at what's happening in, 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 in an individual country, but can also see the influence it, happens, it has on a global level. And the final key main use is a and R, discovering new artists. And today, um, the way the industry is structured these days is giving opportunities for artists all over the world. You know, the top 10 artists in the world used to always be dominated by um, US artists and um, British artists. Whereas today, half the artists in the top 10 come from countries which never really had an established music industry. They come from Puerto Rico, they come from Colombia, they come from all over the world. So we're helping our users and discover artists on a global level. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. So uh, I have some questions, you know, you, you, in, in your like uh, presentation, I can know there's like a, uh, one, there's a 365 like a new cat like a uh, like a new dimension in in your like a, the whole like a 365 day 365 marketing yeah yeah marketing yes so yeah. I I was super interested you know like how can you get like a this like a market how can you like extend your market in so so fast and so uh, in so large. How can how can you how can you market that way? Do you mean? Yes. Yeah, it's. I think it's progressive. You know, the the music industry in the past was always focused on releasing an album, and you know, man, a record company or an artist management and the artists themselves would put a huge amount of effort into promoting an album when it was released and then stop promoting the album and go off on tour. And, where, and that was fine in the days when people used to buy CDs in record stores. 
You know, that was all, all an artist wanted, was for people to go into the record store the week the album was released and hand over $20 or whatever currency. And at that point, in a sense, the marketing job was almost complete because the consumer had handed over the money and the, and the record company and the artist were monetized. Whereas today, people don't buy music, they just consume music. And the more and the only way an artist can be compensated for the music they create is if consumers consume, consume and consume and ideally tell their friends and tell other people about how wonderful the artist is so they consume as well. So today it's the, the job which you, everybody used to focus on doing in a two week period now and essentially has to be done 365 days a year. And then again, 365 days the next, the next year. It's a I fundamentally see. different skill. And, um, and the entire music industry is gradually learning to adapt and also discover the new opportunities it provides. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ch Chad. And uh, I think, you know, I think like, uh, Hazo has like a similar idea in like a, how use the AI to drive the music. So how about next turn? You can, you can introduce your company. You bet, you bet. And I can talk about the way <laughs> that, that Musio, you know, we might be um, tackling some of the same, the same challenges, uh, but it's a slightly yes. different approach. So, so hello to all the, all the listeners and viewers. Uh, my name's Hazel Savage. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Musio and we do artificial intelligence for the music industry. Um, I've been in the music industry for about 14 years. So I started at Shazam, yeah. I've worked for Pandora, I've worked for Universal Music, and now I'm the, uh, the founder of my, I find that the, the, the thing that we find with artificial intelligence is as much as we talk about it, people always think it sounds great in theory, but the first thing people want to do is they want to see it work. Um, so I've just gone over here to museo.com. So this is just the website um, that my company has. And essentially we have this tagging demo um, and we're addressing a not dissimilar problem to the one Chaz described, which is, you know, when I used to work in a record store uh, 10 years, oh, more, more like 15 years ago now, um, I used to put the new CD signals on the shelf every Sunday night ready for sale on Monday morning. And on a really quiet week, there'd be two. On a really busy week near Christmas, there'd be five. And that was kind of it in terms of new music, um, two to five songs. And so that was a very manageable amount of music. But now you have streaming services, um, anyone from QQ to Spotify who say they're uploading 40,000 new tracks a day. And how do you manage that volume of content? Um, you could hire a thousand people and you still couldn't listen to every, every single song that's released in any given day. So that's kind of where we where we came in with our technology, which essentially is um, using artificial intelligence, but on the audio file itself. So this is where we kind of diverge. Um, you know, Chaz is doing great high level, um, you know, AI with uh, machine learning with, uh, with data and metrics. So we take the actual audio file and by transforming the audio file into a series of mathematical transformations or highly colored spectrograms, we're able to extract features and train the AI on to learn really specific tasks. So we did a, a pilot with a Chinese streaming service where they said to us, can this AI tell the difference between Mandarin and English? And I said, yes, of course it can. You know, if the human ear can hear it, we can tell the difference. And so what we did was we took 5,000 songs in Mandarin, 5,000 in English. We taught the AI, this is what Mandarin looks like. This is what English looks like. We ran the process for two weeks, training on the same, the same data. And then after two weeks, when we showed the AI a new song that it had never seen before, it could say with 97% accuracy whether that song was in Mandarin or English. And so if you imagine you have 40,000 new songs a day or possibly 200,000 new songs a day uploaded on a UGC platform, if you need to know what language they're in, um, you know, we can fully automate that process versus having someone manually listen to every song and tell you which language it's in. Um, so this is the process that we do. Um, and we have this uh, fab little tagging demo here. I'm just gonna click one of the demo tracks. 
but you can drop in any YouTube link or you can upload an MP3. Uh, taking a big risk doing a, a live demo here, but uh, essentially what you'll see is uh, it's it's just tagged the, the Billie Eilish song, Everything I Wanted. And the genres here, indie, alternative R&B, elements of indie tronica, elements of R&B, all of these tags are generated based on the audio file. We're not pulling data from Spotify. We're not pulling any data from YouTube. All of these tags are generated based on what the AI can translate in the audio file itself. So say you're building a playlist or you're working in a sync company. You know, I need I need a, a new um, headline track for this Netflix show. Um, and I really like this David Gray track. Do you have anything similar? You know, what do you have that's available? And then essentially what we do is we're gonna, we're gonna provide results based on this seed track. And, and really what we're doing here is we're just trying to create like the world's best version of search using audio. Um, and so this is a product that, you know, this interface is, is new, but it's available for, for use by our customers. But we also sell the API. So you can plug this search technology directly into uh, record label catalogs, um, sync companies, publishers, uh, you name it. But um, really we're just trying to take the core technology and bring it to the uh, to the industry so that music is more discoverable. Artists have more opportunity. You know, I can't tell you the number of times I've been testing this technology on a on a client's catalog, and I'll find like an artist that I know, like personally in the catalog, and I'll shoot them a message going, "I didn't know you you were published by these guys." Um, because how do you serve up those rare gems, and how do you serve up, you know, if you're just reply, relying on people to serve you music that they can physically remember, the brain has a mental cap on how many tracks that could be. And I think we have customers using this on tracks of a million. We have customers with databases of 10 million, and we can search it in a matter of seconds. And, you know, it could be that I now click everything here and turn it into a playlist. And, you know, how long did that take me? Well, I only get five minutes, so it must be under five minutes. Um, but really, it's just about <laughs> flexibility and kind of bringing this technology to the market. Um, so, yeah, that's what that's what we do at Musio. So thank you so much for, uh, for having me. So click and clear. We deliver officially licensed music to performance sports worldwide, uh, which is an untapped market uh, worth over $2.4 billion annually. So by performance sports, I'm talking about sports such as dance, gymnastics, figure skating, cheerleading, where music is intrinsic to the routine or performance. Um, and we really call ourselves kind of a rights tech company. Um, we've got a lot of technology uh, around rights, but we are ultimately a music licensing platform um, providing different technologies. So the reason I started Click and Clear was um, I was working in the music industry uh, in, in the licensing world in sync um, for sort of films, TV, advertising, um, but mostly online and digital media. But I'm also a world champion cheerleader and I often travel around the world happen, uh, helping national federations start their own disability inclusive cheerleading teams. And what happened was a major um, sued one of the, well, sued a few of the music producers creating music mixes. So they were editing and adapting music, changing the tempo, adding sound effects and voiceovers into a mix to accompany these routines that the team then choreographed to. And they were doing so without licensing it. Um, so ultimately, these sports, they want to license music. They want to eliminate the risk of lawsuits and increase athlete participation and engagement in their sport by sharing the content out there. Um, but actually licensing those rights is, is really challenging. And from the music industry's perspective, they just don't have the ability to be dealing with a million requests of usages in a day. Um, and these rights are not handled by collecting societies who typically deal with performing rights. So we're really dealing with a specialist bundle of rights that are required for these sports. Um, I'm just going to skip past this here and talk about our solutions. So what we do is we license the unique set of rights needed from the music industry, including the record labels and all of the publishers for every track. We then do B2B deals with international and national sports federations to um, make changes to their music guidelines and enforce the use of licensed music, um, sometimes becoming their exclusive provider. Um, 
And then we offer instant downloads of licenses to teams around the world, all um, pre-cleared on our platform for sort of 15 or $25 per track per mix for one year's use. So we basically created a marketplace um, which aggregates the content and demand and enables us to license on a sort of high volume basis at a, at a rate that is affordable for the market to withstand. Um, so just to talk about our technology a little bit, whilst sports can of course write the rules, they need technology to help enforce them. So there's three different parts to our tech. We've got a rights management database, which ingests and matches music metadata, the famous word that everyone doesn't like. Um, it's very complicated. So what that system does is it ingests the metadata, both DDEX and counterpoint files from uh, labels and publishers, uh, ingesting the ownership information, territory uh, information, restricted artists if there are any, um, the splits, and matches the master and publishing data together to deliver us fully cleared music, which is then made available to our licensing platform. We've cleared over 15 million works um, already, and there's about 500,000 tracks in the system, which is being matched um, as we speak constantly, and then delivering that to the licensing platform. And that's um, really our uh, marketplace, which is, of course, we've got the incredible AI search for Musio now as well. So we, we tag all of the music using Musio and enable people to search through that. Uh, teams can license the tracks immediately. They can create playlists, uh, share those playlists with others who are maybe creating their mix for them. Um, but ultimately it stores the license details for the teams so they can go back and check that at any point. Um, that information is really there for our license verification system, which is for me, I find a really exciting piece of technology. And what it does is it ingests music mixes made by the teams. Uh, it then recognizes the music being used in each mix, kind of like Shazam. And then it verifies those results against the license agreement to deliver a fully auditable trail of licensing to the federations and event producers running competitions. So essentially it's like a content ID system, but it's specifically for music mixes and used at all of these competitions. Um, so that's a new piece of technology that we've um, been uh, implementing. We were supposed to do some trials earlier this year um, before the world championships got uh, postponed. Um, but it's a really, really great piece of technology and, and that enables us to help these federations and event producers uh, license the additional rights that they need. I talked about further promoting the sport um, and they do that by sharing video content of these competitions online, but they can't currently do that uh, with the music. They, they currently mute the music because they can't then also obtain the sync rights that they need for video on demand or the live streaming rights or DVD rights. So our whole, we're kind of taking this holistic approach to licensing where we're making sure that at every point of use, uh, there is a license uh, being made available. Um, so together those, those three platforms uh, enable us to create the sort of full solution for the, for the market. Okay, thank you, Shetel. And uh, let me introduce uh, Jia Ling Pan from Food Dimensions. Um, so I'm the uh, vice president of uh, Food Dimension company. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I'm the uh, only uh, Chinese company in this tour, if I'm right. Um, so I'm very honored today to uh, join the talk and to meet all of you. So I think I'm, I'm, the, I, I'm in Shanghai right now. The same with Paul. Hey, Shanghai. Hi, <laughs> hi Shanghai. <laughs> so it's evening here. So uh, our company is called uh, Food Dimension, and in Chinese it's called Fei Di Man Xun. So actually, it's very similar to each other. Uh, but in Chinese, uh, Food Dimension also has another uh, meaning: is Si Wei, four dimension. So what we are doing is we have our uh, own uh, audio sound technology. And also we are a cutting edge company. Uh, I myself, I graduated from uh, the music engineering department of Shanghai Conservatory. So you can tell that music engineering actually is a cutting edge uh, department. So combining uh, music and tech. So I think it is, you know, a very good topic to talk about today about music and tech. 
Um, so this is the construction of a company. We have a mother company called uh, SE Electronics. So SE Electronics is a, a worldwide brand. Uh, our headquarter is in San Francisco. Uh, and we uh, develop, design, manufacture, and marketing and sell our products uh, all over the world. Uh, so main product is microphone, uh, professional microphones. Um, we sell it all over the world, um, and we have a manufacturer both in Shanghai and the States. And also we have laboratories and our own development team. Um, so we have a full line of our uh, microphone products. And food mention is the company that we have in mainland China. So these are uh, some of our users. Uh, we have users from the sound, engineer, uh, sound engineers as well as our singers. So also you can tell that Billy Eilish <laughs> just mentioned. So we guys use our uh, SEV7 MC1, the product are in a Grammy uh, performance this year. Um, so also we have a big names like Justin Timberlake. He also use our uh, product as well. Um, so we have a lot of users, uh, many uh, Grammy winners. So what uh, Food Dimension do is we provide a total solution for our customers uh, from um, creative design to uh, content production to room acoustic to uh, audio system. So uh, it is a, a full uh, total solution. So uh, normally when the customer come to us, uh, he want something very special or uh, with their first design. So we give them a conceptual design first. Um, then from the content part that we combine our technology uh, as well as the room acoustic design. So give them a total solution of a space or a performance. Uh, so we have our uh, own technology called uh, WFS 3D Sum Technology. And this technology is both in the uh, software part and hardware part. So we have our uh, spatial audio workstation, which, which helps to uh, create content. Also, we have uh, the WFS 3D Sum Technology, which is a spatial uh, technology. So you can see here the right side. So uh, in the past, sound is uh, flat, only in X, Y axis. But now we are um, upgraded sound to the Z axis. So it's a three dimensional uh, sound technology. So uh, what we are doing is we are creating the sound of tomorrow. Uh, by the creativity, by content, by acoustic, by system to combining together. So what you hear from us is not the sound of today, but the sound of tomorrow. So this is our ambition and this is our vision. Wow, I don't want the sound tomorrow, I want today, now. Can you elaborate <laughs> this uh, speak to we're me? Bringing, <laughs> we're bringing the sound of tomorrow to today. <laughs> so what you can hear now is the, like the sound of tomorrow. Yeah, I so uh, I, I really interested in uh, the project you have been done, you know, in the previous. So which project is the most remarkable project you have, your company have done? Uh, like this is uh, a benchmark project we did in Shanghai, the Shanghai Tower. So Shanghai Tower is the second tallest building in the world. Uh, what we did, what we created is the top floor of Shanghai Tower, 126 floor. It's on the 632 meters. So what we did is we uh, used the sound technology to enhance the experience of this space. So this space is a damper floor. It can't see outside actually. Um, and the space is irregular, you can see this. Can, you can tell from this photo, it's a round shaped space. Uh, so normally sound can't be uh, really uh, very well uh, performed in such kind of spaces. But what we do is, um, the sightseeing floor is on the 118th and 19th floor of Shanghai Tower. Uh, when someone go to the, uh, the landscape of Shanghai, after he experienced uh, the highest, view of Shanghai, 
he want to know more about Shanghai, then it's not from what he see, but what he feels. So we created a very immersed space we called a concert hall, so you can feel about Shanghai. And we invited a very famous uh, music um, composer, Simon Franklin. He is the uh, music producer of Avatar and Titanic. So he created a content for this space called One in Shanghai. So this is uh, what we did. So we helped to enhance, to raise the value of the art space. This is what we did in 2018. Uh, so it's the 20th anniversary of the Shanghai uh, uh, Grand Theater. So we did an outdoor uh, 3D sound opera, the Magic Flute, together with the Hamburg uh, Opera House. You can see the stages are cross-shaped in the center and the, the audience is sitting in the four quadrants. So it's a very irregular uh, setup of the uh, stage performance. Uh, but each day, each quadrant, all the audience can hear very good sound quality performed. And even if it is outside, you can feel like you are sitting inside. You have an ambience of the um, concert hall. And uh, since it's an opera, so the performers are uh, walking around on the stage. And by using the sound localization technology, we can record the sound can be with the performer. So no matter where he or she is, the sound is with them. Uh, we also did the stage show once upon a time in the, the Majestic Theater here in, China, uh, in Shanghai. So uh, no matter uh, the it's indoor or outdoor, uh, no matter what the shape of the, the spaces, uh, the 3D sound technology can perfectly match and the users for the space. So this is our website. We have the course. We provide like a STEAM course, uh, study about support and design technology job fairs. So we also have, uh, we have lab. The lab is uh, provide like uh, some, we, we basically we help like companies or like schools to uh, give them like, the technology in art and the design. Uh, so uh, we also uh, coming out a new idea with, with the, the foundering, which is a platform for creative coders and artists. They can combine with each other, so they can they can meet each other and uh, you know create new things. So here is some project we have done. So uh, this is uh, we 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 also you know we have some resident artists that come to of course. So we help them to run exhibitions. Also we we have our own exhibitions. This is a project we have done last year, March. Uh, we did this in Great, great Seattle of China. Uh, the exhibition called the SLAM is an AI-driven uh, laser show. So basically, it looks like, uh, okay, this is the environment. It's a huge luxury, like a theater. They have six, uh, they have 700 seats. And this is a laser show we have done. It has like a, three lasers project to the, two lasers project to the audience, one project, uh, one laser project on the, uh, on the screen. And uh, we created like some uh, environment, people can, uh, can, can hear the sound, also they can watch the generative uh, image, generative like motion. All this uh, content is uh, made by code. We use code to generate this content like the shape and the color. We, co we collect the data from internet, like uh, we collect the traffic data, the weather data, and the people chat even, <laughs> or QR code, uh, yeah. And the data will generate a different shape and the color. And uh, also the music is, uh, we, 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 we hired a musician called uh, Sun Lan to help us generate this 30 minutes long music. And the music will also as an input to uh, to has like an influence on the on the screen. So it's make a system we call the audio visual audio visual system. So the sound will generate new new uh, new image, and image will also get some feedback to the sound. So they are just like a make a loop. So let's say the sound animation. Maybe zone doesn't have a good like uh, image, but we can we can feel, you know. So. 
it's very like a, uh, we, we, we call it like a new media art in China. Okay, so this is the first, uh, first project I want to introduce. Also, we, we have like a, uh, another project I want to show uh, here. So in the, 2008, uh, in the 2018, we, we have done this like a AI exhibition called uh, uh, the postcard from the future. So in this project, we bring uh, some AI artists uh, to use like a, uh, we use a gun and uh, uh, like a uh, different uh, algorithm to generate a different, uh, like a deep dream, like a style image. Okay, so uh, that's uh, some exhibitions we have done. Why we did these exhibitions? Because we want to bring uh, this technology uh, to the, like, a, like everyone. So everyone can know what technology can help our like, a normal life become like, a more uh, vibe or more like, uh, exciting. So, uh, and then we also get some students from the exhibition. So they will join us to learn this technology and they will they will create a new, like a new product. And uh, our goal is we want to bring like our tech to everyone's home. That's, uh, that's uh, my gene and our gene. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so that's of course. And uh, we get like a, a more than 30 artists joining our platform to give uh, students uh, art and design uh, courses. And uh, we also have more than uh, 30,000 uh, students in China and uh, all of the world. Okay, so we know each other. We, we both know what we did and uh, what company it is. So let's maybe have like a small conversation. I think you both have some questions to ask each other. So now we have some free time. Let's say, let's call like uh, five minutes. So if you have any question, please ask each other. So Paul, I, I think I wanted to sort of jump in here and actually ask you a question about what you're creating. It's, it's quite, it's quite amazing, like how you're using AI to sort of design an art in a way. Um, and I mean, how, like, how are you sort of taking, I, I saw the video of the people and then mm -hmm. the, the little drawing of a face and then it moving the mouth and everything. Like, how are you doing that? Yeah. What sort of data points are you looking at and how are you, how did you kind of get that working really? So actually, uh, the truth is like uh, we, we use a, a language called creative coding. It's a specific language for artists and designer to create uh, some art projects. It's come yeah. from some design school like MIT Media Lab or Parson Design Technology or ITP in NYU uh, in New York University, like this program. They have some good coder. Also, they have the, the idea of artists so they combine the program and uh, some like art idea together to generate these tools and perform to 
us, like uh, me, like a hyper designer and a programmer, to use them to generate their new ideas. So in that, uh, uh, if you say some chump face, you can use like your face to control a chump face, that one, that's actually we use a Python and uh, with like uh, some uh, framework co called uh, like a pixel to pixel. It's pixel to pixel. And uh, yeah. use that, we, we, can, we, can, we can just make a fake, fake face uh, with chump. Uh -huh. And uh, you, we also use uh, like a, a computer vision technique. Uh, it's called a face detection. And to detect, detect your face, uh, your eyes, your nose, your mouth angle, and map that into the chump's face. So finally, we get that project. That's just a one example. We have a, a tons of like creepy ideas. And then now it's become more and more popular in design industry. A lot of people just starting, you know, use code to create a, like a new design. It's become a new trend. Yeah, so how to copy, sure. copy right list? I have yeah. a question. That is, a, that is gonna be a challenge because, you know, copyright is, is sensitive and there is always that question. I think, I'm, I'm sure Hazel, you've had the question of AI created music, you know, AI generated music, who owns the copyright? Um, and, and it's a really interesting sort of debate to have, but I think ultimately it's, it's whoever kind of created or, or like, we use technology already to create music. You know, we use things like Logic or GarageBand or Cubase or whatever to produce music. Um, yes. And we're using their tools. So I, I kind of am on the, the stance of, well, it's the person who sort of told that AI to do the thing that would technically yes. own that. But um, yeah, I mean, Hazel or Chaz Angel, do you have anything to add to that? Any yeah, I mean, in, in terms of um, sort of AI ownership, I mean, sort of, we're not in the generative music space uh, by design. Um, you know, we, we uh, wanted to be in the kind of the, the supportive uh, area of AI. And the, I believe AI is most powerful commercially when it, can take away the very rote aspects of, of music, you know, like manually tagging songs, uh, manually playlisting songs. But the creation, I, I like to leave to the, to the human beings. But funnily enough, when it comes to, to the AI that we use, obviously all designed and built by my co-founder, uh, we consider the artificial intelligence to be the intellectual property of the company. However, the tags that we generate, we consider to be the property of the person requesting them or the, the owner of the music or the licensor of the music. But it's, it's certainly a fun one to get into because usually when people work with us, they've not worked with an AI company before. So it's kind of a, what do you own? What do we own? How's that going to work? You know, um, and we've done it a few times now, so it's a little bit easier. Um, but I had a question for Chaz as well, like in terms of um, the chart metric platform. I know it was a while since we last spoke. Like, where are you seeing the biggest kind of growth with your market? Is it labels? Is it end consumers? There we go. It's a really good question. Um, and, you know, and, and, and in part, you know, it's, it's actually changed fundamentally um, during um, COVID. You know, over right. the past six months, well, let's work it out, four months now, you know, there's been a fundamental shift in the industry and you know our user base when we started off chart metric we were very very focused on really trying to find users amongst the artist management sector artists themselves artist managers digital distributors because these are companies who are you know in its companies or the types of organizations with a hunger for data either they've not had access so Today I'm really glad to meet you guys on the cloud and I wish to, I, I hope to meet you in person as soon as possible, you know, in Shanghai, Singapore, Chile, or, you know, the all over the world. And uh, I'm so thank you, you guys joining this uh, conversation. And uh, uh, today uh, we, uh, we have a really good night in Shanghai. And uh, I hope you guys uh, can uh, come to your your your, bu your business will extend as soon as as uh, as possible, and also uh, I want more Chinese audience can uh, you studying use your technology and your device or you know that's uh, uh, yeah that's it so thank you so much.
哈喽，大家好，我是狂草胡梦周，我是二零二零上海国际独立音乐季推荐官。艾文强梦月，我来自江苏苏州，我是二零二零上海国际独立音乐季推荐官。我是朱静熙，我是二零二零上海国际独立音乐季推荐官。我是辛巴，我是二零二零年上海国际独立音乐季的推荐官。我是国乐行者方锦龙，我是二零二零上海国际独立音乐季的推荐官。